If you're struggling to figure out what your style should look like, one of the key components that I think is important to consider is tonal contrast versus color contrast. If you look at the extremes of this concept, you can see that on the one hand, some artists primarily use tonal contrast or essentially black and white to create most of the impact, most of the contrast within their images, while other artists might actually use color to do exactly the same thing. What I want to do in this video is a study session. I want to actually look at how artists are using this concept in the real world. So we'll check out a bunch of art books of a variety of different artists, some who use a lot of tonalism, some who use a lot of color, and just kind of look at how this idea is actually used in the real world, in illustration, concept art, comics, etc. As usual for a Drawing Codex video, this is going to be neither fast paced nor heavily edited. This is just you and me. We're going to look at some art books and talk about color theory. We're going to check out a variety of different things. You could look at, for instance, some comic book artists, the difference between Auger and the French clean line style, which you know, really does rely on color as a primary form of contrast versus someone like the amazing late Alex Toth, who used a lot of black and white and the differences between these. Fundamentally, pictures are created in a wide variety of different ways. And this is often how we view and understand style. So this hopefully will help you to really sort of unpack how these concepts might apply to your style as well. But as I said, it's not going to be fast paced. It's just going to be you and me hanging out, talking about art theory. So hopefully that sounds interesting. Hopefully you'll join me. Let's jump in and get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. If you want to learn more about illustration or picture making, you can check out my free illustration mini workshop. This charts my journey going from someone who look really wasn't that good at drawing or art to becoming a professional artist being published. I discuss topics such as how to get more detail and polish in your work, how to think about composition, creating thumbnails for your scenes, as well as a few ideas surrounding how to think about getting professional work. It's free and the link will be in the description. So if that's something you're interested in, go check it out. So let's start here with Auger versus Toth as a good example of this general concept. It also points to something that I think is really key to understand here is that, yes, sometimes we do choose to, you know, have a style, but often the way that we develop style and the way we represent things is linked to the technical limitations of our medium. So in this case, Alex Toth was often frequently creating art for black and white comic book magazines. And so you do see him, see him obviously optimize his style to work in black, black and white. It is in black and white. It starts in black and white. And so the dominant form of contrast is black and white. Now, there's obviously other elements of why his work is good. He has excellent composition. He really focuses on shape as well, which is a very sort of efficient thing to do in comics. But that's not necessarily just the key insight we're looking for here is to really look at a major part of how pictures are made is through different dominant forms of contrast. And one of those is, again, as we were saying, this differential between tonal or value contrast, uh, you know, you could sort of loosely view that as like a black and white contrast versus using color. And obviously we're gonna get into some stuff that's a little bit more in the middle, but, but I do wanna just kind of highlight this as a really sort of good example. So. Firstly, again, uh, Alex Toth is an amazing artist. Uh, you know, the late Alex Toth was an amazing artist and really sort of exemplified great composition, really simple graphic black and white. And, you know, I, I think sort of does a really good, good example of, of showing that you can do everything just with sort of simple tonality, simple black and white. But yeah, you can really see how a lot of these compositions, obviously you're just geared to work with the graphic nature of the medium. And yeah, thus they do a really, really good job of showing what you can do if you don't have any color at all. Whereas uh, Auger is, uh, you know, equally uh, a, a very sort of popular, well-known artist, created uh, The Adventures of Tintin. And you can see here that the, the style you're, you're sort of going to find, if 
if I make that a little bit sharper. The style you're going to find in most of these kind of Finnish Tintin books is one where, you know, color plays a really sort of dominant role in the way that we sort of view the image and, and the thing that kind of gives it energy or, or sort of pop. If you take the color away, these aren't going to be quite as dynamic. And, and the other thing you kind of noticed is that because Toth is often using a lot of that kind of real black and white, it, it kind of tends to give things a little bit more sort of impact and, and graphic um, punch, right? And, uh, you know, obviously that is related to the style, but focusing on just color and doing it this way, that there's not a lot of vibrancy of color as well. This is a very sort of toned down book. It's a toned down style of storytelling, which uh, is often something you'll find in a lot of uh, French comics, um, Franco-Belgian comics, and yeah, but you can see here, again, you know, there's not a huge variety of, of different colors. It's not about sort of popping off the page, but you can see that, yeah, the only way you, you really kind of understand, you know, one thing versus another thing is, is by the color. There's a lot of sort of complexity with the different images. There's a lot of, you know, different overlapping shapes. And the only way we really sort of see a contrast between these is obviously through the color. There's not a lot of shading or you know, sort of difference in value between foreground, middle ground, background. Um, the image is quite flat. There's a little bit, but mostly it, it's really just through these kind of flat colors. So hopefully that gives you a good indication of, you know, how you might sort of look at the difference between value or tonal contrast. And in this case, color contrast. Neither is better. Um, both artists extremely successful, both creating really amazing work with a high degree of sophistication, maturity, energy, um, adventure. Both kind of almost trying to do exactly the same thing with very, very different results. That's not to say that you either have to be in one camp or another. Most artists, in fact, I think balance the ideas of tonal contrast and color contrast. And good advice that probably someone like Dean Cornwell, Dean of Illustrators, one of the, you know, sort of golden age of illustrations, you know, greatest artists, probably was, you know, spending a lot of time doing, which is, you know, we, we make our images work in black and white. And I think, uh, you know, then you also, as Dean Cornwell often did, fold in a lot of color vibrancy, a lot of interest, a lot of drama with the color itself. And I think the reason I always bring up Dean Cornwell when we're often doing these study sessions is I think he did a lot of things well. So you can really see the often the combinations of these different skill sets. And often it is people like um, John Singer Sargent or Dean Cornwell who people view as being really high up in the you know illustration history, etc. who I think are sort of good to look at because one of the reasons people often do is, is because they, they, they did combine a lot of different good elements of picture making. So here you can see you've got some good examples of, of illustrations and you can really see how, like most of the images he's doing will work pretty well in black and white, right? A lot of this book is in black and white and I'm imagining that you know, either these images have been turned into black and white or they were originally black and white. But either way, you can see this method of picture making really functions well. These sort of strong graphic compositions work on a total level, but it's when you sort of combine the vibrancy of the color that they sort of really also sort of come into their own. And this is often how people are recommending that you sort of start illustration and, and sort of conceive of like what a good illustration is, because this means it's more likely to survive different types of reproduction, different people seeing it, Many people have, uh, you know, color blindness, so they're not going to be able to see quite so much of the color vibrancy that you might have in a classic, um, uh, again, even something like uh, Tintin. Comics have lines, though, which does make that a little bit more palatable, but uh, certainly with Impressionism or something like that, some people may not see it. They, they may have uh, not, they may have a physical inability to pick up those wavelengths of light. So anyway, having a good combo is, is really good, and you can see... Cornwell has exactly that, right? You, you have here, I think this, I just really like this image because it's such a good mix of good illustration, really abstract picture making. We have a lot of these sort of pointillism style combinations of color that are very sort of artistic. 
Um, you know, you just kind of look here, there's so many nice little combinations of color. All these little areas just look great on an abstract level. The form is great though, the, the, the structure is great. And again, this will work really well in black and white as well. So if you sort of turn off the color, this would still function, you know, really, really nicely. And this is often where, as I said, this is often where a lot of people are sort of trying to live is, is with illustrations that, that tend to work really well either way. Although, um, you know, often he, he does have some of these sort of more stylized ways of painting that, that feel like they fit more for a mural. They seem a bit more two-dimensional and they do look like they rely more on color to kind of function well, right? There, there's less of that sort of graphic impact. Um, and yeah, you, you can really see that often th there is a real sort of strong element of color. A lot of reds and blues, a lot of real sort of primary colors, a lot of, lot of serious drama here. And um, yeah, you know, I just think uh, Dean Cornwell is, is someone who had great control of both. And uh, again, probably like uh, looking at the the film of this, right? Looking at the video of this, I think the original will show up a little bit more color vibrancy as well. Um, uh, like the original book I'm looking, and I imagine if you look at the actual originals, they would also have a little bit more color vibrancy. But yeah, just the subtlety of the colors, different different sort of pinks, purples, right? Allows a very flat sort of somber image somehow to have a little bit more energy. And I think it's often these little subtleties of how you kind of mix these two that can that can give you really really interesting results um, and sort of you know bring your bring your work up just that little bit more. But you can see a lot of them have very strong sort of graphic compositions that would work you know sort of no matter what. But uh, yeah, you know every now and then you've got these these images like this that just are, are really sort of heightened by color. You know, this is sort of very morose. You know, it's a very sort of uh, sort of downer story by the sounds of it. And yeah, you can really sort of see how much the the vibrant blue, the little red book here, the little sort of bits of color around them really sort of help support the narrative, help give, give the image a little bit of pop. Um, but still, you know, if you sort of turned off all the, the color, I think this would still work pretty well. And uh, again, you know, that's a, a good example of how you can use both, um, and normally I would say probably the the foundation to using both is to start with a good black and white tonal layout, and then sort of add color um, as as you need. But I think uh, you know one of the reasons uh, Dean Cornwell I think is also you know so good to look at is that frequently he he is doing a really good example of showing you kind of how far you can push both color contrast and value contrast. And often how I think, uh, you know, that that can be done in a tasteful way. Because it's easy to do too much. And the biggest mistake people normally make in the beginning is like too much value contrast, too much color contrast. It's it's all too much. Whereas Dean Cornwell just kind of manages to get it all just right. Going back to Toth quickly, it's also worth mentioning how sometimes, um, you know, you can see that if an image is really designed to work in black and white, it can be very challenging to color. And this has happened with a lot of these kind of classic strips that were illustrated in black and white and, and just kind of a nicely balanced and uh, working quite well. And then, you know, if you try and add too much color to these or you do too much to it, um, from, 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 look, from, from my perspective, often it just sort of ends up being a little bit too much. Um, and I think that's like also a good sort of lesson to sort of contemplate. Some people just like the color and frequently in this scenario, comic books that are colored have been you've been able to charge more for them they're seen as a sort of higher production value black and white was always like a bit of a, like a cheap sort of production value so th there is sort of this this feeling that color is more and better but i think the interesting thing about most comics that work really well in black and white is that when you color them that you it's very hard to make them look better <laughs> than they did um, and I think that also gives you a good insight into how making images either work one way or another or balance like Cornwell did is, is certainly a tricky proposition. In a few of the other videos I made on tonal versus color contrast, I spoke about the idea of how abstraction can often also allow you to break a lot of rules. And this is frequently where we get things like style and some of the comics we've looked at 
really do lean into that. But also you can see if we take some sort of classic Leyendecker art by J.C. Leyendecker, another sort of titan of the golden age of illustration and someone who's, you know, good to look at for craft and skill and, and all of those good things. But I think one of the things that uh, Leyendecker does so well with his kind of really sort of formal compositions is, again, just sort of blend often, you know, sort of graphic compositions and often there are some sort of quite vibrant colors right where we have sort of strong reds um, very sort of graphic bold colors mixed with sort of very realistic representations where everything is kind of drawn tonally um, there is often a bit of a graphic nature where i think some of these styles really do sort of blend between sort of paint and, and almost like a comic booky style it's very sort of interesting one of the first, I mean, it, it really seems to me like one of the people that everyone still looks up to these days is having that kind of prototypical feeling of style where he really was abstracting things to such a degree where, you know, he obviously had this very sort of distinct style. But again, the point here is that, you know, you can have these things like bright red backgrounds and graphic flat elements where you have really sort of intense aspects of color and that that can, can sort of help. But Again, someone who's good at mixing both things, both this sort of tonalist rendering where you have, not tonalist, but uh, sort of tonal rendering where you have, uh, you know, sort of good feeling of light and dark. But also you note that, you know, it doesn't have that Rembrandt-esque Italian chiaroscuro. There is a lot of subtle color contrast in here to really sort of help push the forms without making it feel really exaggerated. And often it's that graphic nature of everything I think that really sort of allows um, Leyendecker to sort of push that through. So here you see, uh, we've got like a few more sort of colorful ones that really sort of push that forward. And yeah, I think it is just this abstraction that you can start to get to that allows you to kind of break some of these rules and, and really have sort of very vibrant colors that, that might be sort of hard to represent, you know, if you're just kind of painting a scene. But once you sort of move to style and something that's more akin to graphic design, it, it's a lot easier to kind of break rules and have fun, add really sort of vibrant um, colors here and there and kind of make everything work. And again, I think that's also one of these things that uh, Landecker does really, really well. And uh, th this ability to really maximize your use of color and your use of value is something that defines a lot of, you know, these sort of really, really good sort of golden age illustrators and Look, a, a lot of what people appreciate about, um, you know, sort of all artists who, who reach a really high level of quality. So, um, yeah, obviously just amazing work. We could sit and look at Landecker stuff all day, but um, I think it's an interesting insight. And the reason I often bring this up is, you know, this is some of the first times that, that this kind of stuff was done, you know, that that, that, that level of sort of style was sort of used and, and popularized. Um, so it's kind of worth looking at this and kind of, you know, going back to those roots of uh, style and where people were starting to play around with, with different ways of, of making images. And a good example of where you can see that today with more modern illustrators is someone like James Jean. This is another book I often like to sort of show because I think it does a good job of highlighting James Jean's ability to utilize, you know, sort of great painted um, sort of tonal rendering, you know, very sort of expertly done rendering of faces and features. There's a real three-dimensionality to it, but also very graphic use of shapes and colors. Um, this is the Fables, The Complete Covers by James Jean. And this was when I think he was doing more sort of commercial illustration. And you can see again that I think once you kind of start to push the boundaries of reality a bit and merge more into design, in the same way that Leyendecker was, you know, doing with those Saturday evening post colors, you can start to, you know, play with things, right? And you can see there's like an interesting mix of the image working on a color level. We have lines abstracting things. We have sort of light and dark. Some things are very flat. Some things are very rendered. Um, and uh, yeah, once you kind of, once you kind of delaminate yourself from reality a bit like this, many, many things are possible. But it's important to understand that, you know, often these are not 
trying to represent like a realistic scene or anything like that. They're just kind of this sort of graphic cover that's meant to sort of tell a story by telling often, you know, very different sort of elements here and there. And I think it's uh, often this abstract nature to the way the art is presented that also allows that suspension of disbelief when you're, you're no longer quite sort of worrying about, you know, whether it's fitting into one particular image paradigm or another, because it's obvious that there's a lot of fun happening here and a lot of graphicness. And again, you know, like wide, wide variety and mix of styles, which I think is often why, um, you know, these kind of covers worked so well. So, yeah, and, and obviously... I'm trying to sort of show you different poles and different extremes here, but most people, as I said, exist somewhere in the middle and are really sort of good at using one thing or another. If you're trying to paint realistic, more realistic scenes, that's where, again, really sort of having something that's coherent and consistent is more important. But a lot of style and a lot of what people appreciate about art is that we can break these boundaries and mix up a whole bunch of weird stuff that, you know, is a lot harder to do in film or you know, any other way. And it's often like the really interesting mix and interplay of that that gives us style. Um, again, in this case, uh, you know, a very sort of weird mix of, of feelings, right? Uh, graphic nature, uh, flat colors, rendered things, some things almost done in different styles, right? And, and sort of combined with each other. And yeah, there's definitely no rules, but I think it's also important to understand that this is where I think style and understanding style is so important is that it really only works, I think, when you are pushing the limits of believability. So if the style is facilitating different graphic compositions where you have a combination of different elements, the image and the story and the, the idea behind it really needs to support that and also be a little bit crazy and a little bit out there. And you need to kind of give us a reason why as an artist, you are using that style and sort of pushing it. So I, I think these things tend to work better for covers, for abstract images, um, or for stories where things are sort of more um, abstract or extreme, etc. And uh, that's probably why this sort of mix of art and storytelling, etc., kind of really fit the fables uh, comic book in in the first place. So. Anyway, the, the, these ideas are very sort of nuanced, right? This is not necessarily any attempt to pigeonhole any of these styles. It's just looking at the way different people kind of create stuff and I think how it often relates to these kind of basic, um, you know, sort of principles of picture making and composition, etc. The other thing I like to look at, and this will be the sort of the last one we sort of check out here, is Daryl K. Sweet, because I think he does such a great example of mixing all these things, of having very vibrant colors, a very representational tonal style of working, and just an ability to kind of mix things up and, and have these book covers that are very vibrant and have a huge amount of color in them. And some of them are more sort of tamed down than others, but yeah, the, the ability to kind of have these kind of bright blues, um, really kind of strong color contrast and sort of impact there, um, I think is is super, super impressive. And every now and then he kind of just does this thing where he manages to fit every color on a page. Now, this is kind of a good example. You've got like green, blue, red, yellow. It, it's it's like every sort of vibrant primary color. And, and I think often people would kind of shy away from being this bold, but um, you really do notice uh, with the late Daryl K. Sweet how impactful these covers were and how good it was for you to be able to kind of see them, uh, you know, across the room. They really, really did work well as colors. But yeah, who frequently have this stuff where it's just primary color, you know, straight out of the tube, it almost feels like. And, um, you know, it, uh, it, it looks like it's a bit much, but I think this is really good to study because it shows you kind of how far you can go and how interesting that can be. So I think all of these images probably would work quite well if you made them black and white, but but they really do sing with the color, maybe maybe more so than, than some of the others we kind of have seen. Um, so yeah, again, you see some, some classic sort of fantasy style cover and just like very vibrant um, sort of lighting scenarios, super blue colors, 
super green, super red. And you can see, again, like there's an abstract nature to the way this is created as well, where, you know, the, the yellow light is not really affecting the dress in, in a huge way, but, you know, it all kind of works. So also, you know, there is a comic booky sort of hyper-realistic nature to this that is super interesting. But this also should give you some confidence to just kind of say like, look, you know, anything's possible. Just go crazy, right? Um, often... Uh, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want, which is not to say that, you know, Daryl K. Sweet couldn't paint very sort of naturalistic environments. But yeah, so much of what he did just had this super high impact, uh, fully painted uh, tonal sort of rendering um, that I think is something we can always appreciate. So hopefully that gives you a few things to think about when it comes to tonal rendering, tonal contrast versus color contrast or rendering with color. As I said, this is one of the trickier ones to really sort of get across because you can see that most people get really good at working in the middle. And I guess the challenge for us artists is to figure out where we fit. Because often, even though different people work in different realms and some people have some flexibility, you can really see that people do tend to lean on a particular you know, like a particular sort of thing that really works for them and, and a particular way of making images. And I think if you really look at this and, and understand the way that you want to create contrast and, and what's important for you and to maybe just look at the artistic idols and aspirations and inspirations that you have and try and really look at what makes their images work. It's so easy to have some rule or something that someone said about composition or rendering or how you make good pictures. And then you see one of your favorite artists who's kind of not doing that. And, and it's really hard to figure out kind of why. So hopefully this has just been a little bit of insight into how much freedom there is. As long as you really understand why you're making a picture and if you do break some of these sort of conventions and sort of start making graphic stylistic things, I think the key is always just to make sure that your style has a purpose for existing, that your style is taking advantage of the ability to make things graphic, of the ability to break rules, of the ability to combine things. And that every image you see is interesting and fun because of that. And likewise, that, you know, when you're dealing with adding a lot of sort of color to toneless paintings that you, you have a reason for it, right? A lot of these impactful illustrations are meant for covers or other things where we want a lot of impact, right? And you don't always want impact. Sometimes we want to tell things that are more subtle it's all a matter of what is the story you want to tell, what are you trying to say, and how do you use either tonal rendering, tonal contrast, or color contrast to get your idea across. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one now. Let me know if you've got any comments or questions down below, particular artists that you think highlight good color contrast or good value contrast, and you know what kind of style you're really interested in building, whether it leans more on color, more on value, or somewhere in between. Be really keen to know what you think. Other than that, catch you around. Happy drawing.